Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me today on this podcast uh, for The Fiscal Feminist. I am Kimberly Davis, also known as The Fiscal Feminist. And um, I'm really excited about today's podcast. It's a very timely um, topic in my mind. Uh, it's addressing a, a number of different topics, and uh, I'm calling it Crypto Community BFF and Playlists. Is this the way forward for women investors, or is it style over substance and group think? This is a, a big question um, on my mind right now as I read about the multiple things that are out there for women to access uh, in relation to their investing. So let's uh, rock and roll and dig into this topic. So there's a quote by Anne Rand, and I'm sure I'm not saying her first name right, but bear with me. Um, and the quote is, money is only a tool. It will take you wherever you wish, but it will not replace you as the driver. Um, whether you agree or disagree with her general philosophy, I think the quote is a good one because, you know, we are masters of our own universe and we really much are pretty much in control of how we react to money, how we handle it and how we incorporate it into our lives. So um, with that said, you know, I think a lot about women and money, and I have read that fear, anxiety, inadequacy, and dread are words that 47% of women with at least $25,000 of investable assets associate with financial planning and investing, according to a March 2020 U.S. Bank Woman and Wealth Insight study. According to the Federal Reserve, women are less comfortable managing their retirement investments and making investment decisions than men are. So only a fraction of American women, 26%, is investing in the stock market. That's only a quarter of women. Why is this the case? Well, in my opinion, largely it's simply an issue of avoidance, fear of the unknown, and it's a long tradition of a lack of financial guidance to and discussions with our daughters and younger women. You know, the narrative uh, has not really been to discuss these issues with women when they're younger. And that's kind of a historical, you know, kind of thing as, you know, women weren't even owning property until the late 1800s, early 1900s. They couldn't really get a credit card in their own name until the 70s. So, you know, I think we still have a ways to go on teaching our uh, girls and our younger women about uh, their financial future. So according to a 2022 Wells Fargo study, you know, it is probable at some point women will be in charge of their family's finances and women are increasingly becoming the sole or primary breadwinner, you know, in their family. So they are going to be taking care of their increasing the net worth of the family. The good news reported by Wells Fargo, though, is that women exhibit several important strengths related to their investment success, including discipline, willingness to learn, and a selective approach to risk taking. And this is a very important point. They have a greater uh, willingness to develop a financial plan and to stick to the plan than men do. And the report states that from January 2016 to December 2020, female-led accounts achieved higher absolute returns than male-led accounts for that five-year period, and that was on a risk-adjusted basis. So um, what does that really mean? It means that the data revealed that women investors on average took approximately 82% of the risk that men took, and they still achieved higher investment returns. So that proves, right, you don't have to take outsized risk to get return you always want to focus on that risk adjusted return. This is all very good news for women. And it substantiates that when women focus on investing, and they leave their fears and avoidance at the doorstep, they can really be effective in building their wealth through investing without taking gargantuan outsized risks and trying to get rich quick. So Let's segue into what I really want to talk about today, which is the state of play with women and crypto. There is a movement to expand inclusion in crypto to women because the industry has developed uh, a reputation as a very male-dominated space that's less welcoming to women founders and engineers. There are very few women leading the creation of crypto products and services or acting as thought leaders in the space. 
A December 2021 report by CryptoHead found that less than 5% of all crypto entrepreneurs are women, even though more women have started investing in in blockchain-powered digital assets such as crypto and NFTs, um, they are still a very small percentage of the overall population of crypto investors. It is, you know, it's being argued um, that in the early stages of any kind of new industry, when that is when the fortunes are made, right? And the people who are the big winners and influence the direction of that industry are the early uh, investors. And because women haven't been a part of it, people are positing that women, you know, shouldn't wait to become a part of it, or they will miss out on economic empowerment. So that's, um, you know, a thought out there floating around at the moment. CNBC reported in the summer of 2021 on cryptocurrency's big gender problem. According to that report, crypto investing and culture were supposed to level the investing playing field and be inclusive, yet most women remained on the sidelines. In June of 2022, that wasn't that long ago, a Go Banking Rates uh, study stated that just 15% of women invest in crypto compared to 38% of men. So in my opinion, at this moment in time, this is a good statistic for women, good news, because it shows that maybe they're not so inclined to buy high into the hype without some investigation. So in addition to that, enter the nascent online community investing platforms that are springing up with the motivation to create community uh, in investing for women and for Gen Z and the desire to make the information accessible and digestible so as not to be intimidating or overwhelming. These communities can be accessed through apps and websites, and in an effort to diminish the idea that investing is difficult and complicated, they're colorful, they're kind of hip, and they have a platform for women and anybody who's on the app to share their ideas about what to invest in. So we're gonna talk about that later. So hold that thought, more on that later. So in addition to these community inspired investor platforms, celebrities and moguls weigh in on investment in cryptocurrencies and are often paid influencers encouraging people to put their money into crypto because it is the way of the future. So who are these crypto ambassadors? What's that all about? So unless you live under a rock, you are probably aware that the current state of play in the crypto market is extreme volatility resulting in a crypto meltdown. So since November of 2021, Bitcoin has nosedived 70% and the value of the cryptocurrency market has decreased by approximately $2 trillion. That's a lot of dough. The notion that crypto is an inflation hedge and has no correlation to the broad stock market has proven to be erroneous. And there is a lot of pain in the crypto world right now. The pain has been made, you know, has been exacerbated by the amount of leverage that is in the crypto system. There's just as much leverage in the crypto system as there is in the traditional system. So there's a lot of debt in the system, and that's due to these centralized lending schemes that they, you know, that have popped up over the years. So a few of these lending platforms have had to pause, and they've uh, some of them have even filed for bankruptcy. So not a lot of good news on that front. But if you watch the 2022 Super Bowl, you may know that it was nicknamed the Crypto Bowl because there were so many ads featuring the crypto industry, many of them featuring featuring major celebrities. Uh, if, if you remember, um, there was a commercial by Crypto.com featuring Matt Damon, and the tagline was, Fortune Favors the Brave. Pretty big statement. Damon compared the creation of virtual money to the invention of aviation and the development of space flights. So in other words, very life-changing for society. Well, not really, because if you invested on the day that Damon's ad launched and still are invested since then, you will have seen a loss of 63%. If you are waiting to at least break even and return to the full value you know, of what you initially invested, the price of Bitcoin must increase by 171%. 
So I guess you could call that life changing, maybe not in the way that he had meant, but certainly for people who lost that amount of money, it's pretty life changing. So Hollywood celebrities, famous athletes, they're all sharing their enthusiasm for crypto with the masses on social media, during interviews and music videos in which this virtual currency world is portrayed as a very, you know, cool, hip, inclusive type investing world, unlike traditional finance. And it's they're also portraying it as a chance to make tons of money. So spreading the word about the potential of crypto to enrich investors has also been targeted to women. Reese Witherspoon, another celebrity promoter of crypto, boldly stated, crypto is here to stay. Paris Hilton, who has almost 17 million followers on Twitter, often features her dogs, crypto and ether. And Gwyneth Paltrow has also endorsed investing in it. With all these celebrity endorsements, it may be easy for women to be swayed by the herd mentality, by groupthink, and by, you know, all these celebrities saying, hey, this is a very cool community. You should want to, be- you know, belong to it. And it's a great way for you to make some some quick money and get rich quick. That's what their kind of their message is hinting at. But the thing is this, guys. These celebrities, you know, they're, they're who are offering up all their thoughts and their influence and their opinions and encouragement to participate in the crypto market, they can often afford to lose money uh, given their overall net worth. And remember, the, they're often paid influencers and they, they might be even given cryptocurrency for free for doing the commercial. And the, the people that are watching these ads, like you and me, um, you know, we may not be able to afford to lose all of our savings to our crypto investment. And the losses might be devastating to us. And it could really affect the long term of our lives and well being. So I just want to, you know, kind of discuss this in a cautionary way, so that everyone can, you know, look out for certain things, if and when they decide to dip their toe into these waters. So the other thing I want to talk about now is the emergence of the online community. So let's be BFFs. So there's a community that's been endorsed by several well-known celebrities and successful women in tech, and it's called BFF. And it's a decentralized and open access online community with a purpose to make crypto and Web3 access um, accessible to women and non-binary people. So just For your information, uh, Web3 is a catch-all phrase that includes a confluence of technologies such as blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and NFTs, which are non-fungible tokens. So when people say Web3, that's pretty much what they mean. So on the face of it, I love this idea of community. I love, you know, women gathering together to encourage other women. So BFF's uh, 70 founding members include Gwyneth Paltrow, Mila Kunis, Tyra Banks, Kate Hudson, uh, Rent the Runway CEO Jennifer Hyman, and Eventbrite CEO Julia Hartz, just to name a few of the big names that, that in you know women who have come to endorse this BFF space. Members exchange advice on the creation of crypto wallets, purchasing crypto and NFTs, and then how to identify scams within the crypto world. And that is something important that every crypto investor needs to be aware of. There's a lot of uh, scams, a lot of cybersecurity problems. The mission of the group states, together, we aim to foster opportunity, community, and a household name brand built to scale and endure for years to come. So that's their mission. But to me, It's a strange combination of a shopping and event site encapsulated in a site where women can message each other about crypto and NFT questions and get suggestions and learn the basic of crypto investing because it it drives engagement through some promotional giveaways and live events. So for example, at its January launch, it gave away or airdropped thousands of friendship bracelets, uh, which were tokens, which the recipients could then exchange for a profile picture that was an NFT of themselves. And, you know, that's kind of a cool thing, right? Your profile picture is an NFT. Featured in the stories in the BFF launch are uh, people who have been investors in crypto since the early days. So the OGs who became financially independent and who are considered 
outsiders to traditional stereotypes. And crypto investing enabled them to be successful while being their authentic selves. Again, a very laudable um, situation and goal. According to Britt Morin, a co-founder of BFF, a lot of the OG crypto people are so thankful for BFF, Morin says, because at the end of the day, by expanding the market size of who's participating in crypto, everyone wins. So I don't want to be, you know, Debbie Downer or too skeptical, but this sounds a little bit like multi-level marketing to me. You know, getting more people in means the original people make more money and then you make money off the people who come in later. And it, it doesn't really kind of um, resonate with me when it, as, as an investment, as a, a solid investment strategy. I'm worried that women will be swayed by women celebrities and get caught up in this excitement of these really colorful and fun websites with apps and giveaways and events and not ask the most important question. Is investing in cryptocurrency a sound idea for building my wealth over the long term? Do I understand it? And is it more akin to gambling? And I, you know, I really want women to be asking those questions because nothing is simple or straightforward in the crypto world. Another investment platform with the design of TikTok and the playlist of Spotify um, is an investing app for women that was recently launched. Uh, it's called Alinea, and it was founded by two Gen Z women, both 25, who met in an economics class at Columbia University. So pretty smart cookies. Uh, they raised $2.1 million in seed funding for their app. So they definitely got some notice and some gravitas by raising that money. Their thesis is that Gen Z has a large share of purchasing power. Women constitute only 15% of the crypto investor market. And the women and women who are single after the age of 65 um, are make up approximately 49% of the population. And they all need investing tools that will last through retirement. So the Alinea app's mission is to be a platform that is user-friendly and educational, uh, and that will enable women of all income strata to build their wealth through traditional investing and crypto investing. So I love that the mission is educational and incorporates different ways of investing. Um, this is an amazing mission if it is executed properly. The tagline is, we are changing the way the next gen invests. Express yourself. It's investing gone social. So I like that younger people are involved. They're trying to get some excitement going for investing. And they're starting, you know, um, apps and mechanisms that are relatable to the people that they're aiming it towards. This is all good. That's all good stuff. The Alinea founders say the first investment is the most difficult step and creating a friendly, familiar, fun, and community-oriented or experience will encourage women to be positive about it, embrace the benefits of it. And again, that makes a lot of sense. Um, the app allows users to see how their friends on the app are allocating their funds by their playlists. And that's essentially a list of what you're investing in. So you make your own playlist of the investments that you decide you want to put your money into. The premise to the investing in the app, and this is where they're starting to lose me a little bit, is you invest in what you know and believe in, put your money where your mouth is and create your own thesis of investing. So for example, if you wear Lululemon and you like it, you invest in Lululemon. If you like Apple products, you invest in Apple. If you if you want a certain car that you like, maybe a Tesla, you invest in Tesla. Um, that kind of thing. So app urge, you know, they are encouraging you to invest in things that, that you know and you like and to put your money where your mouth is. And app users um, are encouraged to do this and to invest in things that align with their beliefs. With respect to the educational element, in their words, they provide bite-sized insights so you can tap and scroll to learn about companies and investing. So I applaud the effort to generate community excitement and the dissemination of bite-sized insights in order to get women to start investing. But, and here is the big but, not everything that is worthwhile and reaps benefits should be reduced to a soundbite 
and group thinking. So if I share my playlist with you and you invest in what I'm investing in and you don't know why I invested in it, and I don't even know maybe why I invested in it, but maybe because I like to wear those leggings, well, I'm not sure that's a sound investment strategy. And I also believe it could lead to a very bad place. So fundamental analysis of the underpinnings of an investment is essential to understanding why you should or you should not make the investment and how it fits in your overall plan, your overall strategy. Um, I, I get a little bit worried about bite-sized and let me see what you're investing in and maybe I'll invest in it too. That is not, um, in my opinion, a thought out strategy that is good for the long term and, and could have some pitfalls. But, you know, it's not just a Gen Z thing. It, MasterCard just created the Bell Block. In June 2022, they launched the Bell Block, which is a community focused on educating and empowering women and non-binary individuals to benefit from Web3 technology and crypto. So MasterCard's global crypto and blockchain team partners with the Web3 community to provide education about crypto and the blockchain. That's good. Block, you know, Bell stands for business growth, education, leadership, legal and regulatory and entrepreneurship. Kind of a mouthful, but all good things to aspire to. And Bell Block, Bell Block believe that crypto will have significant implications on how people spend and save in the future. So they believe, again, that the, the crypto will figure into the future. And the mantra is that collaboration is essential for crypto to keep growing which again causes me pause because it's more about getting more people in there investing without maybe understanding that, you know, why they're doing it so that more people create more of a momentum. So here's the dilemma. Here's the dilemma. I'm happy that the platforms are being created to educate women about investing and to encourage women to be proactive about wealth creation and investing. That is fantastic. This is a big step forward. The, you know, we need this to keep going. However, what I'm really concerned about is the reductivism of the messaging. So what do I mean by that? It's the implication that women need oversimplified explanations to understand investing and should follow others in their investment strategy without qualification as to whether these people have any clue as to why they are investing in what they are investing in. And that seems patronizing and condescending to me about women's abilities to understand fundamental investment analysis. Yes, there may be a reticence by women to think about investing. But if we could create robust educational platforms, then the messaging over time will begin to change and resonate. And there are platforms and there is, you know, a lot of educational platforms out there that can, you know, give you some information about investing. Um, and, and, you know, the bite-sized messaging or messaging primarily through community, this can lead to receiving advice that may hurt women financially. And a recent survey by Go Banking Rates revealed that 40% of female crypto investors claim savings, savings as a goal for their cryptocurrency investments. So while saving money is a really good long-term financial strategy, we all should be saving. Cryptocurrency is not a safe bet for building your savings, right? Because the purpose of savings accounts is capital preservation and to have a lot of liquid funds, right? Cash on hand. It's your liquid cushion. The profile of a savings account is kind of the exact opposite of what crypto investing is, okay? Crypto investing and cryptocurrency is volatile. It's unregulated by any government um, entity. It is highly speculative. You know, if you have a savings account in cash and it's in the bank, you have insurance from the bank by the FDIC. And you, yes, maybe you're not earning a lot of uh, interest on it right now, um, although that's slightly changing. Um, at least it's safe. And savings generally means your liquid cushion, not investing you know, in with the risk reward of, say, the stock market or the bond market um, or alternative investments. So, you know, this is not 
savings in, in, in its, um, you know, purest form. So uh, f- unfortunately, according to the study, that is exactly what women are using crypto for, savings, with only 13% of female investors in crypto saying they're doing it to get rich quick or, you know, turn a quick fortune. So if you're listening to a community of people saying it will help you build wealth, you might be inclined to go along for the ride, which in my opinion is dangerous. Crypto investments should only be in money that you can afford to lose. And I'm not sure that messaging is getting conveyed in these communities. You know, crypto investing is based on sentiment. It's based on groupthink and it is highly speculative. Many people who are promoting or creating these communities don't seem to focus on the holistic financial planning and an investment strategy that all people main and including women should be pondering and focusing on when they're putting together their strategy. Rather, these communities seem to be capitalizing on the frenzy of this new currency that allowed some to get rich quick um, due to their early entry and the overall herd mentality. So I want to go back to the beginning of the blog or the podcast where I'm saying women are inclined to be more methodical investors and they believe in financial planning and they have had greater success as investors through informed risk-taking than their male counterparts. So women are very capable of doing this and they are actually accomplished at doing it. So it doesn't have to be reduced to a bite-sized piece of information that isn't really fully explained for someone to get involved. I think we're giving uh, women a little bit of short shrift there. So here's my take. Be discerning. Elevate becoming financially knowledgeable and building your wealth to be a priority in your life, equivalent to self-care, equivalent to going to the doctor. This is so important to, you know, really understand your finances, what you're investing in, why your strategy is what it is, what your holistic plan is. And especially, you know, for women, women live longer than men. They have a five-year greater um, lifespan. They're going to have more expenses in retirement, more medical costs, so on and so forth. A lot of times, you know, they're taking breaks throughout their lives uh, due to childcare and whatever. So they have more roadblocks along the way. So it's very, very important that women understand what they're doing financially and why they're doing it. It deserves your time, your investment of time to educate yourself on fundamental investment analysis and holistic planning to provide you with the life you want to create throughout your years on earth. I mean, you owe yourself this. If you don't do it and you throw caution to the wind and and, and later down the line, you understand what a mistake it was, it may be too late to fix it. So although bite-sized and fun exchanges are easier and light, Sometimes we have to take the time to do a deeper dive into the why and to understand that the main difference between speculating and investing is the amount of risk involved. Investors try to generate a satisfactory return on their capital by taking on an average or below average amount of risk. Speculators, on the other hand, are seeking to make abnormally high returns from bets that could go one way or the other. So a true investor is in it for the long term, right? In my opinion, building a portfolio that over many years could eventually provide the financial resources to achieve important goals, such as a comfortable retirement or all the other things you might want to do in life, whether it's, you know, buying something, going on a trip, educating your children. Investors know they are buying shares in a company that produces goods or services, that the company has a balance sheet and projections of earnings and guidance And there's something behind the projection of how this possible investment is going to go over time. But, you know, if you're a speculator, you want to see results and you want to see them in the form of big gains right now. And they're often willing to take very big risks to achieve these outcomes. The fact is, is that many speculators in cryptocurrency do not fully comprehend what they're buying because Crypto just isn't that easy to understand because it is based on group sentiment. And when something is based on whether somebody tweets something about it and then it either goes up or down, that's really not about fundamental investing. It doesn't have anything to do with anything tangible. It's about sentiment and group think. So I'm going to conclude 
by quoting my partner, David Bonson, at the Bonson Group, the wealth management firm at which I am a managing director and partner, in uh, the Dividend Cafe that he wrote on July 15th called A Fool's Game. And to quote, he says, there can be multiple variables and layers, and it can be quite complex. But fundamentally, investing is the realization of a return for the risk one took to invest in a future cash generation, debt, equity, real estate, that kind of thing. When we talk about fools, we basically talk about that poor soul who knows not the basic definition of investing. We talk about those who have decided thousands of years of law of nature no longer apply. We talk about those who are prone to listening to their friends, a chat group, bar talk, or peer pressure more than the fundamental realities of math, science, logic, business, finance, and economics. I believe that women have the ability and the discipline and the um, personalities to really delve into investing in a meaningful way. I applaud all these communities that are popping up to make it more user-friendly and allowing women to feel like there are other people out there they can talk to about this, but I, I would caution everybody that all that glitters is not gold and to really take a, you know, a cautionary approach to it. You can listen, but I wouldn't act unless you completely understand what you're doing and you're, especially in the crypto world, willing to lose your money. But buying investments based on what other people are doing uh, without understanding their analysis in my game uh, in my opinion, is a very dangerous game. And I just wanted to caution everybody about that. So that's it for this time. Please, um, if you liked and enjoyed this, uh, I, this podcast, please rate it uh, five stars. Please subscribe to it. You can uh, follow The Fiscal Feminist at The Fiscal Feminist on Instagram. Um, and you can also check out the website, www.thefiscalfeminist.com. Thanks so much for joining me today. See you next time.